Good day, I'm Tanya from South Africa, and today I'm going to share my story and how my journey began in funding the Kruger Millions. So I'm planning on making about 10 episodes where I'm going to narrow down all the different versions down there and follow some leads. So it all started with my grandma's story. My, uh, my great great grandfather, which was her her grandfather, um, claimed that someone appeared to him in a vision and showed him where the Kruger Millions was. So she packed her bags and she took her uh, oldest son with her, and they went on a journey uh, towards the direction where he indicated the the, the treasure was. So. It ended up being close to the Kruger Park um, in a private, I think it's a, it's a government area. But that in that year, it was still accessible. So they went in, they found the spot which was indicated. They started um, digging some holes and they found actually some pots, which they claimed um, the, it was the holders where, the, where some of the coins was buried in. So... Um, Unfortunately, while they were busy, there was a big fire that broke out, broke out and they got very nervous and they packed up and went out of the danger zones. The following day, they went back and they started digging again. And then all of a sudden, uh, the grandfather that was with them said, no, they must stop. They must put everything back. Something's not right. So just then, then they stopped everything, packed up and never went back again. So fortunately for our family, our one, the one uncle, my, or actually my, my mother's uncle, uh, still is still alive. And he also has a story and he still has got the exact location. However, he only is only willing to share it with us once he passed away. And then he will leave it in a, in a map form to us. But besides that, uh, I just listened to the story and I left it there, never worried about it again. So later on, uh, I visited a friend of my dad's and we were sitting one day on the stoop and talking and I don't know how it happened, but we came up on the, on the subject of the Kruger Millions. So he told me, as far as he remembered, the Kruger Millions was buried in Mokobane area, which is our town, it's Potkipersres called in that days. And um, he said they were having a bright place um, one day long ago at someone's birthday party. And at the party, there were some, some old professors and friends of them, and they were discussing this and all agreed that the, 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 the treasure came this side. So that's where my hunt began. So they claimed it was buried close to a fort in this area. So I started tracing, um, going to the local museums, um, started researching, trying to find out where the fort is in Mokobane. However, I couldn't find it. So um, I, I, the, the closest that I came to it was finding a scans, apparently in, in the 18, I think it was the 1890s or so, there was um, some Boers that were still living here just after the malaria breakout, they came back again. And um, some of the, the, the black tribes in the area um, used to um, come in the nights and attack them and kill some of them. So whenever they, they suspected that the tribes were coming, they went to this, uh, Guns, as they call it, and they hid there until everything was safe again. Unfortunately, up to today, I could still not find the scans. It's very difficult. There's no evidence. I went to, um, I, I read some uh, theses of, of people who, who studied the whole um, history of this area and everything. So I didn't just leave it there. I then started um, really investigating the Kruger Millions and I went on YouTube, I went on the internet and I started researching all the different versions out there, listening to all the videos, just looking at all the different things. And I came to realize that um, there, was, there was two very important points that it seemed like the, the, most of the people had the information wrong. So the first one was that the new parliament, um, everyone thought it was moved to Mashadedorp. But in actual fact, it was moved to Petersburg, 
So I'm going to quickly read to you. Um, it was on the PGS Heritage site where I found this article. So PGS is an independent specialized heritage consultancy uh, that provides advice and solutions to public and private clients on the African continent. So they had to do this, um, this uh, whatever you call it, um, for the government at that time. And then let me read to you. Um, it's on page 28. Um, there's a paragraph. It states, in 1900, there was a historic gathering of the Transvaal and Orange Free State Republics where Petersburg was nominated as the temporary seat of government of the United Boer Republics. This means uh, that probably because um, Paul Kruger used to be a felt coordinate in this area, and he also owned a property in Leidstorp, which was is not as about 100 k's from Petersburg. So he used to travel via this road to Leidstorp, and he still had good relations with the felt coordinates of this area. It just makes sense that he, he, he appointed the parliament in this um, area, and the English troops were not yet um, occupied um, this area, so it was still safe. It just makes sense that he, he could have sent the, the plan was to send the gold in this area. So um, that was the one thing that stood out for me. And then the second thing was I found uh, Sinner van Rensper's visions. Um, apparently, uh, he said that the, the gold will be find, found once the Boers reign again and um, to use it to build up the country. So I'm going to quickly read you uh, his vision. So the vision was uh, small clouds in the north move away from each other and the sun shines brightly. The fight for survival and unrest is past and there is peace. There is a gallery in the sky to the north. On the gallery, there's an inscription like that on the tabernacle with gold candlesticks. The sign of a covenant vow and also indicates the presence of gold. One of the sources from the collection of the late Wimpole, uh, Prince mentioned that the gold refers to the rediscovery of Paul Kruger's missing gold bars and coins. The much talked about Kruger millions hidden in various man-made caves. So because I followed um, Sinar van Rensburg for quite a while, and I really believe in his pro um, prophecies and that he was a, a true prophet from God, um, this was quite um, significant for me. Then the other thing uh, that I came about uh, that I found was um, the story of the diverted trains. So there's not many people who make mention of this, but there was one specific guy who made a video and um, I'm still trying to, to narrow down the, the evidence of that, but we'll discuss it in some further videos. So there were three trains, one with the, was with the government officials, one was loaded with the gold, and one was a diverted train. And then many believed that the diversion went in the opposite direction. And then, of course, the gold went with them to Mashadador. And if, in, if you look at everything that I've just mentioned, it just makes sense that the diverted train should have gone in the opposite direction, which was Petersburg. So, as I mentioned, um, Paul Kruger had good relations with the field coordinates in this area. And maybe, after all, the treasure is buried around Potgieter's area. So if you are interested in following my research and seeing what I found, please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next videos. Thank you. Bye.